here today we're making a barbecue bacon cheeseburger on the Kamado Joe using the soapstone. Let's fire it up. Summer's fast approaching. We just had our last freeze and as spring and summer and the warmer months uh, start to come in I'm thinking cheeseburgers and especially I'm thinking barbecue cheeseburgers and everything is better with bacon. So I got some bacon. I got some nice ground beef from my local butcher. Gonna talk a little bit about that. Really nice brioche buns. We got a couple different things. We got some Atlanta Grill Company uh, barbecue seasoning that we're going to be using as well as a really nice barrel-aged smoky barbecue sauce from uh, from Lily's Barbecue. I'm sure you've seen these nice glass bottles all over the place. They make a bunch of different really cool stuff. Talk a little bit about that. But for right now, what we're going to do, we're going to come on into the grill. I'm going to show you how I got this set up. We're cooking with a soapstone today, which is one of my favorite accessories. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop this open. I just fired it up. And I think it's almost up to temp. Like I said, we're cooking on the soapstone today. Got a little smoke going here, and I got this thing divided into two different sections. I really have most of the coals right underneath this soapstone here, and uh, I've had it fired up for about 15 minutes or so, coming up to temp. It's a really dense piece of stone, almost non-porous, and one of the reasons that that is good is it helps non-stick. So it takes a little bit longer for this thing to come up to temp, but it's well worth it. So if this is non-porous, think about the cast iron grades being porous, if it helps uh, kind of analyze it in your head. So right now we have a fire going under Underneath this, I got the vent fully open on the top, got the vent fully opened up here. Really not aiming for a specific temperature, just kind of good and hot. Uh, and this is also going to be the indirect. If I need to rest the burger, this is where I'm going to put it while maybe I make my bacon. Okay, cool. I got some ground chuck today, really standard for burgers, uh, about 80-20. Got this from my local butcher. I've talked about this in the past. One of the best ways to improve your barbecue is to find a good butcher. I have a fantastic butcher uh, up where I live. You know, I will happily, happily go out of my way to go over there when something's fresh, when something's um, you know, just came in today. This was one of those occasions. So we have 80-20 chuck, really good standard burger ratio. Uh, whether you can go to the butcher or not, that's what I would go for. And we're gonna divide this. This is about a pound and a half. I am looking for about a half pound burger each tonight. So this is about a pound and a half here. I'm just gonna eyeball it and kind of separate it out. You don't want to overwork it. You see the strands in this meat here? That's all stuff that's gonna hold nice uh, moisture. And so I don't wanna break this up all too much. Otherwise, it's gonna be kind of just a dense burger. Um, gonna taste good, but the texture of this will just be much better. So roughly about a half pound burger or so, I'm gonna just kind of press. Kind of round it out a little bit, press. Put a little indent here in the middle because it has the tendency to kind of balloon a little bit. I'm happy with that. We're gonna get it seasoned up. We'll season it up. For the rub today, we're using a barbecue rub because it's a barbecue bacon cheeseburger, of course. And I'm using the Atlanta Grill Company uh, Georgia Butts and Ribs. You really can't go wrong with any of these flavors anyway, but I'm using this on a burger. It's using light brown sugar, black pepper, uh, paprika, some garlic, kosher salt, chili pepper, oregano, Cuban mustard, cayenne, all good things. Uh, I could put this uh, on a leather boot and probably enjoy it. So we're gonna sprinkle this on and get on the grill. All right, I like this so far. Good combination of sort of uh, fine grain and a little bit more coarse ground. So got that one side. We're gonna go in on this side here. And I made these a little bit uh, thicker. This is not a smash burger. This is a, um, I would call this a hearty uh, rib sticking barbecue burger. So I'm gonna use a little bit more than maybe if I would, if I was gonna smash this down really heavily on the grill, maybe just use some salt and pepper. So that looks good to me. Uh, we're gonna check this grill right here. Right now we're coming up almost at 300, but that grill surface there on the soapstone uh, is really more we're focused on. It's not so much what the internal temperature is here on the grill. It's really what that uh, what's gonna give us that sear action. But I think it's gonna be looking good right now. We're gonna get this on, get this cooking. Okay, grill's up. We're gonna take a look. Got some nice clean smoke. And because this is 80-20, I'm really not gonna put any sort of oil or butter or anything like that. If this was a chicken breast, then yes, I absolutely would be adding something to it, but it really doesn't need it. Like I said, this is not a smash burger, so I'm not aggressively pushing this into the soapstone. Just giving it a nice little pressure to make sure all the uh, different areas down there are making contact. And that's a good sound right here. This is a uh, I, what I would call an appropriate sound for this type of burger. 
if this was a smash burger, you want to throw that down. You want that thing to be screaming hot. You want smoke everywhere in some circumstances. But this right here, while not a gentle cook, is uh, I would say a moderate cook. It's gonna allow the burger to cook from the outside in while not overly searing the crust because crust is good, but when it's really tight and you almost need a knife to get through it, that's not what I want. So I'm gonna leave this here for a little bit. Uh, we're gonna come back and check it, flip it, and eventually add some cheese and we're off to the races. Burger's cooking away, so I wanna take this time to present to you one of the greatest condiments, one of the greatest inventions, maybe in human history, and I'm talking about Dukes, Mayo, anyone from the South, uh, I've said it all. You don't need to say anything more. This is what we use. It's it's frankly the best. And because it's a barbecue burger, we're going to be using barbecue sauce, and we're going to be doing a mayo barbecue sauce infusion. And I'm using this Lily's Bourbon Barrel Aged Smoky Barbecue Sauce. Chris Lilly, very well respected in the barbecue circuit, has this line of sauces. This is a uh, limited edition uh, sauce that I picked up at my butcher, and they make this barbecue sauce, the smoky barbecue sauce, and then they put it in a bourbon barrel for six months. You know, I don't think you can go wrong with that. So we're going to combine these two. It's going to be a really nice sauce for this burger. Like I said, Duke's just a big old dollop of that. And then our smoky barbecue sauce. Man, that smoke is hitching the nose right there. Mm. I don't know if I get the bourbon on that, but it's a really good standard um, barbecue sauce. It's, uh, it's a little sweet, got a little heat, definitely some smoke but I think a good standard barbecue sauce for this. Uh, if um, if I were making this, I probably would shy away from vinegar-based sauces, and I love those, but uh, for this, I want something a little bit more thick, a little rich, a little sweet, something's gonna go and pair well with the fat within that mayonnaise. But I think this is good. You can always drizzle some more on top at the end. But like I said, this is just a good base for uh, for putting on our buns. I'm gonna drop the burger on it, maybe a little bit more on top. So right now, this burger's been on for about three minutes or so. Let's take a look at it and see how it's doing, and maybe give it a flip. Three minutes, the burger's looking good. You can see we've kind of maintained that uh, that temperature that we had before. We're not seeing a ton of puddling up here on the top, so it's definitely not cooked all the way through, but this is looking pretty good to me. Let's give it a little look-see. Ooh, that's some good looking crust right there. I kind of like that. Nice crust. The, the burger's still nice and, um, for lack of a better term, pillowy. Like I said before, we didn't mash this up into a, like a meatball and then smash it on there. We were real delicate with it, and it shows right here. There's actually a little bit of uh, uh, almost creases within the meat, and, uh, and that shows that it wasn't overworked. So right now, this is going to go down for a little bit longer. Let that crust on the other side develop. We're going to get some cheese on it, and then we got to focus on the bacon. Awesome. Burger's looking good. Another three or four minutes down right now. Let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> Here we go. So here on the top, you can see some of those juices running out. And it's still a little red, but I can tell this is getting where I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put some cheese on. I got a couple slices of these uh, Colby Jack, real thin slice, so I'm kind of doubling up on it. So I'm gonna put that on. So I have a feeling these are pretty close to done. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and move it to the side here, indirect. If you look down there, there's almost no coals. Burger's going indirect right now, so I'm gonna pop up with this bacon. And again, I got this from my butcher. I'm just a fan. I love a good butcher. You can tell, you've heard me talk about it a lot in the past. This is just a half pound. It's about good for uh, six strips or so. So I might cut this in half to, um, to make it a little bit more manageable for the actual burger bun. Two full strips of bacon, four half strips. Bacon's been on for three minutes. Looking good. Put these little guys over. Now this is a one grilled dinner here. So I'm cooking the bacon on the flat top here. If you want to bake this bacon up, that's a very popular way to do it. And frankly, if it's a Sunday morning, I'm making breakfast with the family, that's probably how I would do it. Um, but if you want to keep things clean and maybe keep all the cooking out of the kitchen, this is a good way to go as well. So this looks really good. I think right now, while this finishes up, uh, we're going to go ahead and take advantage of this great bacon grease and the burger grease that we've been cooking with, and we're going to toast some buns with it. We're almost there. One of the last steps is to toast up some brioche buns or whatever bun you have. All right, buns down. This won't take long. Uh, look at the cheese there. Colby Jack cheese, nice blend. 
You could use uh, sharp cheddar, you could use provolone, no cheese, it's still gonna be good. So these buns have been on for about 30 seconds and that is perfect. That's just what I'm looking for. Okay, we're, I think we're almost there. Buns are done, bacon's done, burger's done. Now we gotta assemble. First step is to take the bacon and this is why you cut it down a little bit. I'm gonna lay this on the top. So that's great. Leave that for a second. We're gonna get some barbecue mayo on the buns and then we are off to the races. We're gonna take that barbecue mayo that we made and then a little bit more on the top. I think we're there, I'm pretty excited. Now that's a burger. Okay, we're almost there. Looking good. And I might've forgotten one of the most important steps. We got crispy jalapenos. I thought about doing a fried onion uh, ring on this and it sounded good, but it was a lot of work to make one onion ring. So they make these, they make fried onions as well, but I thought fried jalapenos sounded awesome. So we're gonna put this on instead. Couple fried jalapenos. And there you go. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. Now that's looking pretty good. Melted cheese, got our barbecue mayo, bacon, got a little crispy jalapeno there. Nice soft bun. Looks good to me. Let's give it a try. If that is not a backyard barbecue burger, in the summer, 4th of July, fireworks going off, screaming the Star Spangled Banner, I don't know what it is. It's really, really great. Awesome beef, that's the, the foundation. Bacon's fantastic as well. And that sauce, just the way we cooked it, melted cheese, cooked perfect. A little bite of that crispy jalapeno. You can't go wrong, this took maybe 20 minutes or so, and this is the perfect way to kick off your summer. Like I said, barbecue bacon cheeseburger on the Kamado Joe using that soapstone. That's what helped us get that nice crisp uh, sear today. And I'm gonna be using that a lot this season. And I, and I think you should take a look at that as well. And uh, definitely give a look to Atlanta Grill Company for this rub, big fan of that. As well as Lily's for this bourbon barrel aged smoky barbecue sauce. Not sponsored at all by any of them. Just really big fans of what they put out. And cheers to kicking off grilling season. It's spring, it's summer, it's warm weather, we're outside. This is what we like to do. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that like button if you found it helpful. And we really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.